life has many twists and turns. How do you escape the successful failure syndrome? Which is basically having public success and um, internal failure. How do you escape it and win at home, win at work, win in every area of your life? How do you live life on your own terms successfully? This is what we seek to do with this particular episode with Mr. Michael Ohinefa, the co-founder of Leader Freak International and an empowerment specialist. We will take you through the 10 domains of life as Leader Freak sees it from the Wheel of Life concept, 10 domains. And in that 10 domains, we will look at how does Michael make sure that he's been a resilient, successful person, if you will, using going through these domains in life. We will get him to score himself along the different domains and we will ask you to do the same as we go along. Determine what your wins are, what your current struggles are, and what you can do to improve on every area of your life. The first one that we want to look at is business or career. Um, there are so many different things that we all do to put um, food on our table every single day. Yours could be um, a trajectory where you are in a certain profession and you're growing in that space. You can also look at a business. So you may be selling, you may be doing your side hustle or a full-time hustle. What does that look like, your business and your career? What must you do to stay relevant in this space? What, and you have to name that space for yourself. So in my case, it's entrepreneurship. What must I do to stay relevant? I have to make sure that, for example, I am consistently learning the new ways, the new trends, etc. because I'm working with people they need to, I need to understand the root causes of their challenges, so I'm consistently learning. What is that for you? So your business or your career? All right, so Michael, we've been talking a lot about, um, let's look at the wheel of life because we've introduced a successful failure syndrome and you've talked about the fact that there are instances where people are publicly successful and yet privately they're struggling. Their lives are chaotic or go, needs attention, basically. And you mentioned some aspects of it. So I think this is a good time to look at the holistic person. So if we're looking at being successful both in the public eyes and privately, what does that look like? Well, um, psychologists and behavior scientists um, develop the idea that our lives actually do not have one domain and that there are several domains or several aspects or components of our lives that uh, come together to form who we call we or me. And then they, they looked at the way we live our lives and structured it or categorized it into several um, domains. So you, you know the 10 uh, domains. Yeah, so we're uh, looking at basically work or your financial health. Financial health, our professional health, our health itself or health and nutrition, uh, our family life, our love and romance life. Our, so all these things come together to form who we say we are. That is the wheel, the life wheel. And then they came out with a very uh, intelligent idea of scoring it based on your own satisfaction at any point in time. And then from the scoring, makes some changes in terms of how you want to move on uh, with your life. So this is a good place to ask you. You are the most unromantically disciplined <laughs> person that I know <laughs> with your your life. This is propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the wheel of life, how would you score yourself per the category? So well, you've already scored me. No. <laughs> I said you've already scored me, so why do you want <laughs> to score? I said unromantically disciplined. That's a score. <laughs> no, it depends on its meaning. All right. Uh -huh. So 
we want to look at the totality of it. So what if if let's look at the holistic wheel. Mm -hmm. What would you how satisfied are you with the different categories of your wheel? As a person. So you give me the category. I'll tell you how satisfied I am. All right. So we have work <laughs> yes. for business and career. Yeah. We have health and fitness. Let's go one by one. We should do one, but yeah. I thought you'd do like a general school. Oh, okay. And then we will go into the nitty gritty. So All in right. general terms. Yeah. Because but, you're a very content person. Yes. Doesn't mean that you don't have dreams or aspirations. I have big dreams. You have dreams. huge ones. Yes. Yeah. But you're a very content person. Yeah. So on a scale of one to ten, ten yeah. being the highest how satisfied yeah. are you with life? Um, presently, I think um, I'm having the best time of my life. Um, I tell people I should have quit work earlier to do what I'm doing now. But of course, God has a time, a purpose, and a season for everything. And today, if I look at what we are doing in the field of development, in the field of uh, social transformation, I think that you and I, our previous work, the relationships, the networks, is preparing us for just what we are doing. Mm. And so it wasn't a, a, a waste of our time working in corporate and working in international development. So I would say that I would give myself eight or maybe 8.5, but that is in relation, not in relation to the present, but in relation to the bigger dream and the bigger ambition of making sure that I personally touch, impact, and transform one million African lives. And it's already started. Uh, we are going to take Africa by storm, school by school, family by family, organization by organization. Uh, whether virtual or physical, we are going to touch one million lives. And already a platform such as Fabulous allow us to reach everybody wherever they are. Uh, platforms such as myleadershipfarm.com, which is our e-learning platform, allows everybody to learn from us. And so we are going to do that. And uh, we keep on uh, networking. We keep on expanding our footprint across Africa. So I believe we would achieve this in the shortest possible time. So while we're on the subject, how would you rate work? I think jealously, and this is really, this is not for Wakanda. I think you smile more when you're with children than you even smile at me. <laughs> so, this is so not propaganda. Like when you are in flow okay, so and working it, with children, yeah. there's, a, there's a sense of ah, that comes with your entire persona, your entire being. So, talk to us about the work that you yes. do. Yeah, right. When, I, when I'm training, I'm in flow. Like, as in, I mean, I'm right that you're. Your nicer smile broader than when you are with me. How do you measure broader? Do you have a like tape you like you here. measure? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. <laughs> now, all the children out there watching us, just know that Auntie Tish is very close. <laughs> <of you. laughs> so, when you see her next time, don't give her a hand. I uh, need my hands. <laughs> well, you are right. Um, what we are doing today. Uh, human development, empowering people, training people, it gives me an intense pleasure. Uh, what the Japanese call Ikigai, I think I've found it, and I'm happy to God I have found it very early in life. So you are right that work gives me a certain pleasure because I'm very happy when we touch lives, I'm very happy when you're able to shift people through the many training interventions that uh, we do. So. But in relation to the end game, which is what we really want to do, I think there's still a lot of work to do there. But your work is not restricted. So in terms of enabling people to understand the, the I think the, enormous, the, the scope, depth and scope of what work is, it could be career, it could be business, it could be anything. Mm. So first and foremost, score yourself over 10 where work is concerned, and tell us a little bit about what makes you, um, what is making you successful in this area. Okay, so I will score work eight out of 10. Um, eight because there are a number of things that I do. As you know, I work as a development consultant. Then we have work with Lead Africa, our training and development programs. 
And then I also am a speaker. I get to be invited to conferences, workshops, and other events. And so when I put all these three together in relation to um, the impact, for instance, in 2023, we've been able to touch close to 21,000 lives directly, not even through virtual means, and that's huge. But there's still a long way to go uh, in terms of our Pan-African ambitions of being in every African country. And that is how come I give that to uh, uh, the room, room for, for growth. Exactly, for growth. But how do you set goals around your business, your work? Um, I think that's, that's what people may want to know a little bit more about. So as you know, we, we are a stickler for planning and strategizing. I teach strategic planning, strategic thinking. So part of what we do in Lead Africa is to make sure that we are moving according to set objectives. Now, what we do is we have um, what we call thinking retreat. That's like our strategic planning sessions, which allows us to cast an eye forward into the future, the next 12 months and say, what do we want to achieve and how will success look like for us? We break those down into strategic priorities. And then we have our strategic actions that mm -hmm. allow us to systematically achieve each of our strategic priorities. And, and, and so everybody in Lead Africa knows exactly what they are expected or what is expected of them. And they take their strategic actions a day at a time, a week at a time, a month at a time. We, 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 the business is structured in directorates. Mm. And so each directorate knows exactly their contribution to the business. And so that is how it is. And for those business owners watching us, um, don't look at your business as a forest. Inside the forest, there are trees. So clearly identify the trees, and then how are you going to knock down each tree so that you can achieve your ultimate business goal? What does a tree mean in this, in this in, case? In, in this case, the trees are your strategic actions, what you do every day. And then they will then lead you to your strategic priority, which is the big block. And then from the strategic priority, you achieve the business goal. For somebody watching who wants to go in our parts of the world, um, entrepreneurship drives the economy and you have been entrepreneurial since your childhood. What do you think a leader or the visionary, the person who is a visionary or creator of a business should focus on to ensure success for their business? Every leader needs to have three sites, three. The job of a leader is to move people beyond the present day challenges. Mm. If you're a leader and you do too many mundane, everyday challenging tasks, the business will collapse. Okay. So every leader needs three sides. One is foresight. Foresight is looking ahead into the future. Being strategically aware of what is going to happen in the industry, mm. in the wider economy. As a leader, your job is to point people to what they haven't yet seen. Let's set, let us take the example of Moses who came from the bush and went to Goshen and told the Israel guys, Israelites that, guys, I saw a voice in a burning bush that told me we should go somewhere. Mm. And the people are saying, where is it? I don't, I don't know. know. But <laughs> the voice said we should go to a land that will flow with milk and honey. So these slaves were moved by the picture that Moses painted to them. And even though they, did, they thought, oh, this is just a 40 kilometer journey, it took them 40 years. Why? But all along, the generations that left Goshen died along the way. None of them, with the exception of two people, reached the promised land. But from generation to generation, they kept telling them about a certain higher level principle. Where we are going, the land flows with milk and honey and that is what kept them going kept them going in spite of the wars the challenges the everything that they went through in fact in in, in a one space Kadesh Banya they stayed there for 38 years out of the 40 year journey they stayed at one place for 38 years but in all of this there was a higher level purpose that they kept telling their children where the Lord is giving you it flows with milk and honey so you guys shouldn't be perturbed the Amorites and the distance will come back we are going to our own place, that place. So that's what the job of the leader is, to communicate this powerful vision such that the staff and stakeholders 
clients, vendors, everybody understands where you are going in the next couple of years. So first sight, a leader must have foresight. Then the leader needs insight. Insight is an uncanny ability to look at your own business mm. as if you are an external person. Yeah. So you can go inside and separate the trees from the weeds. Insight. This calls for technical competency in the work of the leader. Mm. So for instance, if you are running a big mining firm, the CEO doesn't necessarily need to be a mining engineer, but it helps if he understands the technical aspect of mining so that he can provide insight. The process flow. The process flow, thank you. Then the next site that the leader must have is hindsight. The leader needs to review, constantly look back and say, what did, how did we get this wrong? What went wrong? How do we learn from it? How can we avoid this mistake in the future? Hindsight. As a leader, you must reflect. You must be able to come back. Even when you make a mistake, you must be able to come back and say, guys, I got it wrong when I said we should introduce this new product. Forgive me, please. Let's rectify this and move on. Reset. Yeah. Three sites. I like the sites. How do you gain alignment? It's about with communication. The stakeholders. Yes, it's about okay. communication. It's about being true and authentic. It's not about coming in with the African concept of leadership, you know, and uh, yeah, I'm the boss, and then and then who you will get it wrong. That's why a lot of leaders lack insight because they don't bring themselves to the level where they can even chat and get perspective from the cleaner or the driver or the junior executive. And so if you want to get hindsight, it's about communication. It's about going, if, let me give you an example. In Accra here, like anytime you go to an Indian restaurant, what do you see? The first person you see is the manager. Yeah. And when you sit down and the waiters come and, you know, usher you your seat, sit, the, the first person you see again is the manager and ask you, are you comfortable? Are you okay? Is everything all right? But when you visit a Ghanaian restaurant... Sometimes it can take you three hours. Exactly. Where's the, the parent, manager? They see, never come. In, in the until you get up and exactly. decide not to pay for the food. Exactly. <laughs> the person you see is the security man. Yeah. And he orders you around and nobody comes to it. And you can, you can uh, have a meal in a Ghanaian restaurant for five years and never know who the owner is. Because they are always busy. They are wearing suits, sitting in an office, talking big. Whereas the Indians and the Chinese are always on the floor, they see the business, they interact with the customers. So if you want to get alignment, there's nothing can replace you going down on the factory floor, going down to the business floor. You know, Lead Africa, there's no aspect of the work we do here that I haven't done. No aspect. I've slept in classrooms, I've slept in uh, tents, I have uh, cross rivers. I have done everything Sorry, that everybody in the Africa does. There's no aspect of this business that I have not been involved in. And so I, so you I walk keep, the talk. I walk the talk. And I keep telling staff that there's nothing I ask you to do that I can't do myself. Sounds good. So if somebody's watching now and you have a business, essentially you have some great tools and tips to manage your business and to ensure the growth and success of your business.